Hi everyone, it's Patty Mack from Teaching with Confidence. I have a really fun activity for you today. It's a strategy game called NIM. Now I know there are lots of different ways to play NIM, but I'm going to share with you the way that I have played it for the last 15 years of my classroom, and it's proven to be quite successful. You have to have two players, and you need 10 items, and those items can be colored chips or coins, toothpicks, whatever you have handy. And you need a paper or a space that's been divided into four rows. So here's an example. I just took a piece of paper and I drew three lines dividing it into four sections. And you put four in the first row and then three, two, and one. First you decide who's going to go first. And whoever goes first this game then they can trade off next time. And then when it's your turn you may pick one two or three items but only out of one row so that's the only really big rule you can only pick out of one row at a time on your turn and you do not want to pick up the last chip the winner is the one who doesn't pick it up so here's a video I'm playing with my daughter to demonstrate to you how to play I'm pretty sure I told her how to the rules of the game. I'm pretty sure I told her that if you pick up the last one, you lose. But, you know, when you get older, sometimes you forget things. So, it's kind of funny because, you know, I think I sort of told her, but I think maybe she didn't hear me or something. So, it takes a while here for her to think, oh, you mean I have to pick it up and I've lost the game? Bummer. <laughs> you can see the game goes very fast. That's one reason I like it. It really keeps the kids' attention. And there's definite value in it. So now this time it's her turn to go. She still hasn't developed any strategies because she hasn't played it enough times yet. But you'll see how fast it happens. And I don't tell her any of the strategies. Because I know the strategies because I've played for so many years. There's one strategy right there. I know to leave her that. So she begrudgingly here says, Oh, drat, I've lost again. I don't know. I don't think we've ever really proven that there's one good way to start the game to always ensure your win. Maybe there is. Plus, I don't think we've ever really decided that if you go first, you have an advantage or, or what. That hasn't been decided either. Uh-oh, she lost again. But she's learning now. Did you see her drag that piece away? She's like, oh, okay, I get it now. So she's played three times. And she leaves me now with, oh, I'm going to lose. Because she left me exactly what I left her. So you can see that you pick up the strategies pretty easy, easily. And then I've always heard that when the game board blows away, the game is over. So why play this game? Well, it improves logical thinking skills. It improves the spatial reasoning skills for those kids that really do a lot in their mind. Like they can see the board in their mind and they know that if they take away these two pieces, that this is what the board will look like. Those are the kids. That's called um, visual, spatial, or spatial reasoning. Those are the kids that are going to have an advantage in this game. It also gives students an opportunity to interact with each other in a relaxed, kind of a fun way, but very controlled. And then I'll show you how the students can reach the highest levels of thinking when playing this game. So one thing I want to talk to the kids about to take it to a higher level is to talk about strategies. In other words, how do you want to leave the board to ensure that you're going to win? Where you can at some point sit back and say, you know, I don't think there's anything that you can do at this point that will allow you to win. I think I have it. So look at the board on the left. So I would say to my students, to, 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 get, to build your strategies, whose turn do you want it to be, the one on the left? 
Well, hopefully they're going to say, you want it to be your turn. So I want that board to be my turn. And I'm going to take the two and leave the one. So when I can leave a board like this for myself, or when the board gets left for me like this, I know I'm going to win. Look at the board on the right. It also has three chips on it, but totally different. Whose turn do I want it to be? I want it to be my opponent's turn. Is they're going to take one, I'm going to take one, and my opponent's going to lose. So those are the strategies. When I talk about strategies, that's what you want them to do. How should you leave the board to guarantee your win? And that's when you have to um, talk about being respectful to each other, not like, ha ha, I beat you, but we'll talk about that, about how you can teach, you know, how to be kind to each other. So once the students get really good at this game, you don't want to give away all the strategies. You, you need to let other kids figure out the strategies themselves. I had one boy, he played this game almost every night with his dad. He got really, really good. And so it wasn't right for me to say, well, you know, tell me what you do. So the kids would play with him and try to figure out what his strategy was for winning. So that's what you do, right? If somebody plays chess really well, you watch them and you learn from them. Now this is taking it to a whole new level to create a new game of NIM. And so all of your students, whether they speak very little English, whether they're low ability, gifted, it doesn't matter. All the students can create a new game of NIM. They just can figure out anything they want to play the game. There could be five rows instead of four rows. There could be 13 chips. All different things but then after you play it for you know you have to play it see if you have a good game have other people play it see what they think and then evaluate and say is this a good game so when you look at the blooms taxonomy the highest levels of blooms have create and evaluate so you have taken your students while playing a game to the highest levels of thinking and that's exactly what we all want to do all the time I mean that's a goal for me every day so awesome you can keep this at a center. You don't just have to pull it out, you know, every now and again. You can leave it out. If it were me, I would put a short little note in my classroom newsletter and tell the families to ask their kids to teach them this game. And I'm not going to put the rules or anything. I'm going to just leave it out there. And the families who actually read the newsletter, they're going to, I'm sure that maybe their kids have already taught them the, the game already. But otherwise, it, you know, the, kid, the child can go home and teach. Now this is where it's wonderful too, is when you're at a restaurant and you're waiting for your food to arrive, just get 10 sugar packets and the whole family can be playing. So it doesn't matter any age of student from you know first grade all the way up to adults play this game. Now different ways you can use it in your classroom, well you could turn it into a center, take a big Ziploc bag and put the game board. And the game board is just a piece of stiff um, like uh, colored paper is what I did and I put three lines on it. And I, the, the rules on a three by five card can be dropped in there. The rules are you can only t pick one, two, or three items from one row on your turn. Don't pick up the last one or you'll lose. And that's the rules are basic. And then put the 10 items in there and voila, you have a center. And uh, you can make quite a few of those if you want. Another way that I did it, sometimes I wasn't the best timekeeper in my classroom, like it would get to be the end of the day and I'd look up at the clock and there's five minutes left and we're still doing social studies. Yikes. So we're like crazy people getting ready to go. And you know, that's just not the way. That's not effective teaching. So I decided that we would play NIM at the end of every day. So we would st stop what we were doing 20 minutes before class got out and the final bell would ring and we would load the backpacks, write down homework, straighten up the room, stack the chairs. We did it all. And then we would play NIM. And the way that I did it was I had an overhead projector. And so two students were up there playing and everybody else was watching and I would dim the lights, which was very calming. And that way, you know, you can learn by watching other people play. And so it was a great calm, everybody left really nice and calm and I had time to do any last minute things. Maybe I needed to meet with a student to talk about something that had occurred earlier in the day or maybe you know one of the students needed 10 more minutes to finish an assignment, whatever. It was just a wonderful time to just slow down a little bit. We always you know feel like the little hamster on the wheel. And then you could even use it at the beginning of the day like once a week. 
Maybe on Fridays you spend 20 minutes playing just to warm up their minds. And an another thing to do is if you have a buddy class, or even if you don't, become one and teach some other kids how to play this game. It really does build relationships when you share this game with other people because anyone can play. It's just very easy. Let's say that you have a couple students in your class that just, they just don't seem very happy or they just, I don't know, they're just kind of disengaged. Then you could pick them if you wanted and say, I'd like to teach a game to the, to the class, but I'd like you to do it. And you pull them aside and you teach them the game and you let them play for a while. I don't know, however long you want to do it, a couple days or 10 times or whatever. And then have them teach the rest of the class. Have them play a few times in front of the room and talk about it. It's not much, but actually it makes kids feel really special when you give them responsibility like this. I think it's a great opportunity to talk about some character traits, like how to respect each other. You know, it's fun to win. It doesn't feel very good to lose, but in this game, I can guarantee you, everybody's going to lose. Teachers, everybody is. You don't always win in this game. And how are you going to act? What words are you going to say? What is your body language going to say? And we just talk about what it's like to, you know, how do you want to be treated when you lose the game? And so it's just an awareness of treating each other respectfully. Some teachers might say, dude, I don't want to play this game and lose. It makes you know, I get embarrassed. But don't, because everyone loses in this game. And what I say is when I play with my students, I say, whoa, dude, okay, let's go back over this again. Show me what you did. That was, that was awesome. Or show me what I did. Or I want to play again. I want to learn from you. You know, so often we think that we have to be the best or, or know the most, but we don't. You know, when I, I taught gifted ed for over 10 years, and I have to tell you, I wasn't always the smartest person in the room. But you know what? I didn't need to be. What I needed to be was to be a very good facilitator and teacher. That's what I needed to be really good at. And it just so happened that I was. And so it doesn't matter if you're smarter than me. What matters is how do, how do I help you to use your abilities to grow as a person? And so it's all right. Just play with the kids and learn from them. So thank you, teachers, for everything you do every day to bring the love of learning to your students. I know it's not easy. Teaching is not an easy profession. I did it for 30 years. I can definitely understand that. I created teachingwithconfidence.com so that I could share with you the techniques and strategies that I've developed over the years that really strengthened and simplified my teaching. I want to make things easier for you because I know how hard it can be to be a teacher, but I also know the rewards that come with it. So I want to help you. So I would like you to take care of yourself. Be good to yourself. Do something special for yourself today. And I'll see you inside the next video.